Yo, what's good folks? Welcome back to my Charmander YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at two different chess games, both starting with the London opening. Uh, we're starting as white, and how this works is queen to d4. And depending on what they do, uh, we bring out our bishop. Sometimes you, if they bring up the, the king pawn, and you just... <laughs> sometimes I'm moving too quickly, and they just give them a free bishop. Um... But the bishop pops out, you, you want this slant here, and the reason why it's important to pop it out early is because you're basically locking it outside, you're closing the gate. So you're popping them out, and that way you're able to develop your other bishop. He's starting with a very traditional opening, getting his knights out, Very, just a very safe development play. Usually, it's taught to develop your knights before your bishops. Uh, we go ahead and bring out my knight. He pins this knight. <clears throat> so if this knight moves, the queen is going to be eaten. We pop up this pawn here on c3 to prevent the knight from doing anything fishy. It also blocks this bishop from, from being here as well. So I like this or popping it one more on c4 which is a, a queen's gambit to take kind of a challenge for control of the board here. But as a defensive move, we like c3. He goes ahead and takes my knight. That's fine. We trade, and the queen is... I actually like this spot for the queen. Uh, he is also doing uh, some defense here in the middle. The pawns in the middle are definitely the most important pawns. And then we bring out my bishop. This is continuing the London opening. Uh, the bishop here is on this slant, which can be a very important slant, especially if they castle to the king side. And he, he's kind of copying me here. <clears throat> but he's actually challenging this bishop. So if you're not paying attention... He might take this bishop and then eating it back with the pawn or the queen. It's not the worst case scenario, but generally what's taught is to either move it up here to this slant to pin this knight. The reason why I don't like doing that is because if they move up a pawn, if you, you know, you can kind of trap yourself by helping him develop some of the pawn pawns and he can castle queen side or you're just trading for the knight. What I actually think is better is backing up the bishop here and almost asking him, saying, hey, go ahead and take me. And he does. And instead of eating it with the queen, which would be what most people would do, I, I kind of like this move. You open up the rook aisle here. Now there's no pawn in your own way. And so you do have a double pawn, and I think this is okay. It's putting the rook in play. The rook is now active, and instead of castling, we're going to bring out our knight here. He takes control of this aisle with the rook, which is good. We go ahead and castle queen side. Everything seems safe on this side, and we also combined the rooks. We developed our pieces. We moved them once. Um, the bishop we did move twice. But we developed our pieces. Um, he goes ahead and challenges for the center. And what you don't want to do is ignore that and have his pawn pit, um, push up one more. Because then his pawn is backed up by this pawn, this knight, this rook, all on this square. And he would be forking the queen and the bishop with his pawn. So you got to be careful. So we back up. We say, okay, I see you. I'm going to take a step back. And then he pushes the pawn up. Again, look, he has his rook here. Bam. Pawn protecting. Knight protecting. I say, okay, man, it's yours, man. Take it. I'm back up. I'm going to take a step back. You can have that spot. You know, just, just don't hurt me. And here's what I do. I'm going to push up this pawn up one because, um, oh shoot, I did that too fast. I push up this pawn 
because this would actually get rid of my double pawn structure. Um, if he doesn't take, then I'll take him. He go, goes ahead and eats it, and we trade out. We take, and so now I have a nice straight pawn structure here. His knight can't go here, knight can't go here. I like this. This works, especially because my king is safe. Uh, we have the rooks combined. Um, the queen is still on this slant, which is important. You'll see for later on why you want your queen to be on this slant still. He goes ahead and moves his knight. We say, pawns, it's time to attack. It's time to attack his king side. He is messing around with his queen. I'm not too sure what he's thinking, but I'm going to continue on with my attack. I push my pawn here to, so his knight needs to move. It's got to move, right? It's forcing the knight to move. This knight is it's on the king side. It's defense. It's best defense for this pawn square here where I have the bishop. Bam. The rook. Bam. So his knight's got to go somewhere. He backs up. Okay. Continuing on with the attack. We say charge. We're going to give extra defense for this pawn structure. This chain of pawns but also what I'm trying to do is open this lane for the queen to get to this spot so that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna get that queen to that spot will be in good business he brings a knight out here I don't know what he's thinking um, I guess he could attack this pawn if my queen moves over here then this pawn is now weak uh, forking both the bishop and the rook if he moves to this spot and my queen doesn't move, let's say I move a pawn up or whatever. He gets his knight here. He's going to fork both the queen and the rook, which is a big no-no. So we see that. We see, okay, you're up to something. So what I do is I, oh, shoot. It was a free knight. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's a free knight. So I don't think he saw that either. The bishop was sneaky and we sniped a free knight, free piece. I missed it even in, in this replay. I would have maybe moved my pieces out of the way, but it was a free knight. His queen moves over here. I don't know what he's thinking. He's, he's trying to make something happen, but he just doesn't have the artillery. He doesn't have the, the means to really do anything. Um, but he can take this pawn here, which would not be, that'd be good. That wouldn't be good. No bueno. If he takes this this pawn, he can put me in check, and it's kind of breaking down my defenses. So we slide the king over and say, okay, now what? He He's going to bring his knight into play. My knight is still protecting this square. Uh, my queen's here, his pawn's here, so we're all challenging for this spot now. And I say, you know what, never mind. We are going to go on the offense. His queen and his knight, his defenders are gone we're gonna go back door him on this side you see how the rook and the queen battery boom can break through this wall the bishop is on this aisle as well so he's in trouble and he knows it so what he does this is this this may seem like a good attack at first would you move this pawn here on um gh7 h7 or g7 would you move this up here or, or move this pawn? I I first was thinking, if you move this pawn, I could eat it with this pawn, right? And then it just it, it, and his, his and then the queen takes the spot. So technically, it's not a great move. It, it kind of breaks down his defenses. But either way, if he brings the pawn forward here, at first I'm like, oh shoot. Now my bishop and my queen are under attack. Oh, shoot. He's got me. I made a mistake. I thought like, oh, he's forking the bishop and the queen. But then I saw something. I said, huh, this pawn is still weak. We have the queen rook battery going to bust in, break in and entering and say, haha, what you going to do now, king? And he only has one move at this point. At, at this point, it's a forced checkmate. There's nothing he can really do. His defenders are way on this side. So the king can only move over 
And from here, I'm thinking, well, what if I move my queen down one more? Where is he going to go? His only spot is um, e7. And at this point, I'm like, oh, is he going to get away? Well, no, he's not getting away because, again, our bishop here is still protecting these squares here. These white squares is like this invisible boundary line. Um, and so my queen pops in. Can you, can you see where the queen's going to move? F6. That's right. Good job, guys. F6 is now check. Where is he going to go? What are his options? He only has one option. He can't go here, still in check. 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 None of his pieces can do anything at this point except for his king to move back here. And I don't know if you can see where this is going. We have checkmate in one. Can you see it? Can you see it, guys? Checkmate in one. The rook comes down to h8. Checkmate. Because he can't go here. Queen is protecting it. Can't go here. Can't go here. He is on lockdown. So we just surprised, attacked him, bust through his defenses. And this is what makes this attack so strong. From, from this situation... I think we there was really not a whole lot that he could have done. Um, I'm not too sure if there was any outs really. Maybe there could have been a, a different approach, but from a, from this point, it's it's a forced checkmate. There's nothing he could have done except run for his life while the cops are chasing him. Boom, got him with the rook. And that was all from the London opening. We're going to take another look at another game. Uh, I think it's this one. Oh, shoot. Was that just the... Where is it? Maybe it was this one. No. Hold on, guys. Find it real quick. I thought we had it here. Um, it's this one, isn't it? Okay, and this comes with the commentary. It says, you executed, executed a great checkmate attack, capitalizing on your advantage to secure victory. What I like is sometimes chess.com actually gives you this um, commentary, kind of like what I'm trying to do right now. Um, but this is how you can learn how to play better chess. It talks about um, what your choices were, what uh, would be considered the best move in certain scenarios. Um, it helps you correct and actually make better moves if you review your game, kind of like if you were to watch um, tapes of like basketball teams or soccer teams and rewinding the, the tape to see how you could have played it better. Again, we are starting with the London opening. Um, and a lot of times it, it just says the knight becomes more powerful by developing towards the action. And interesting, he says one of the best moves, interesting. Okay, we'll actually just give some of our own commentary. Um, but we're continuing with the London opening. So we're both trying to develop our pieces here. He says, very good choice. And then I guess the next move would be moving the knight over. So he's offering the trade. And just like the last game we watched, we're going to push the bishop back. And let's see if he takes it. People do not always take it. People do not always offer the trade. Uh, sometimes people bring their knight over here. And he does take it again. And we 
eat it back with this pawn. Again, this doesn't always work, especially if they castle queenside. Then I mean, it's still nice to have this open aisle and put the rook in play. But you're also breaking down your own defense, and you shouldn't castle on the king side. You're just telling the opponent, I'm probably not going to castle on the king side. You're kind of photographing, I'm either not going to castle, I'm going to go queen side. He goes king side. He castles early, which is fine. And this is, most people are, it's recommended to go king side when you do castle, right? Um, castling king side, king side tends to be safer than queen side because the king is further from the center. Okay, so that's why it's more recommended to go king side further from the center. Uh, so we bring the bishop to this uh, slant here again. And I, uh, again, my queen is still has this slant available. My knight coming to this might be a good move. He puts upon Ford because um, he can see that this square is getting under, under attack. This creates the left for the king, providing it an escape square. We bring the knight out over here. You develop a knight, which means you move it from its starting position. In the opening, it's better to develop a new piece. Okay, yeah, he should have moved like a pawn or a knight or bishop or something to develop. That's what it's saying. I personally think it's okay to move your rook over because usually this is a very important aisle. Nice. Definitely the right move. Uh, this is an octo knight. It can come to like a lot of different squares from a knight in the center. The queen develops or moves for the first time. Good job. That's what I would have played too. So we're pushing the pawn forward. The knight cannot take it because it's still protected by the queen. This is a double pawn, so we're going to keep pushing him up. He finally develops uh, this pawn here. We says yes this is the way this is a the Mandalorian <laughs> so what we're trying to do is push the pawns to get this pawn here again trying to force the knight to move away the knight is already anticipating seeing what I'm doing decides to run is also offering a trade on my knight I'm okay trading my knight this is his knight is his best defender on this side and if we want to trade, we can trade. I continue on with the attack. We have this chain, these pawns chaining again to attack his king side. Again, it's leaving this side very open and vulnerable if the, you know, queens and knights can make it over here. But you can castle to the queen side if you need to. Nice, definitely the right move. This forces the opponent to double pawn. And I don't think that's the worst thing right now because I actually like this positioning. If you were to choose black or white for positioning, white would definitely be in the lead. Black still has a nice line of defense, but look at all the squares I am covering. The pawns are like stormtroopers all protecting each other. And again, the bishop on this slant attacking the king side. Queen can pop in over here. Uh, rook open aisle bam what is his bishop doing what is his knight doing what is his rook doing absolutely nothing not developed so his pawn takes mine and i say yes this is what i wanted now look at this rook has complete domination and control of this aisle very scary for black and you know what i'm gonna do the queen sniping in over here. Bam! With your move, you can now force checkmate. It's That means you basically won the game if you play your cards right. At this point, there's nothing he can do. No matter what he does, if he moves his pawn, that ain't going to do anything. If I come down here, it's checkmate. Queen comes down here, checkmate. Uh, bringing the queen, the, he, the space isn't even available. Trying to move this pawn up. Which I think is what he does. I think this is the, you know, his. He thinks this is gonna work, right? There's not. There's nothing you can do. It's a forced checkmate. The rook 
and the queen battering into this spot here and moving his knight and breaking down his defenses queen and all his pieces are not able to defend let's see what happens he moves the pawn forward and right now i still have three minutes and 46 minutes on the clock for a five minute game that's a lot of time to think and so i'm thinking i'm using my time i'm thinking well if i bring my queen here what am i going to do next He's going to run to this spot. And then how am I going to chase him down? Right? What am I going to do? So instead of moving too quickly, what I do is I think about it. I move my bishop. You're continuing down the road to check me. I bring my bishop to this slant because this is where he's planning to run. I already sent a cop around the, the corner and, and to the backside of the house and say, hey, the king is going to come out running. You better watch this square. So moving the queen here wouldn't help. Moving the rook around, this wouldn't help. It's protected under the queen's supervision. And he takes the pawn. Like, okay, that's just, there's nothing he can do. He takes my pawn and we have him. We have him now. Checkmate in one. Queen comes down. Just similar to last game, but a little different. The queen comes here, it says check, protected by the rook, can't go here, can't go here, can't run here. Bishop is locking down this square. Again, very important to have this bishop on this slant, right? This is the um, the white bishop going on, on this angle. And so this worked out perfectly. It doesn't always work out like that. There's a lot of times they tend to castle queenside. And that's okay. But if they castle kingside, you're sacrificing some of the defense on the kingside here because you're not, you can still castle queenside and that's perfectly fine. But you are sacrificing castling kingside to, you know, again, the guy traded for the bishop and that opened up this aisle. That's what made this possible. And that's why I like doing that trade. Even though you're getting a double pawn, when he castles kingside, boom, rook having this lane is so powerful and especially if i can bring my queen to this spot kick away his ignore uh annoying knight right the queen was not helpful couldn't get to this side to aid the king and from this point it's forced checkmate this is the position you want to be in having this aisle open having the bishop here for backup um, there are different ways of going about it and different strategies depending on the the formulation of the pieces and um, but generally I sometimes people just don't see this coming and I enjoy and again this is from the London opening this is the ideal way that you want to end games right you just it doesn't even go to end game it just quickly dominates checkmate through the king's um, castle and voila congrats on the win thank you thank you but again i'm still learning the, the london defense i'm still learning the different variations there's a lot of different traps but this is probably one of my favorite ways of coming in to attack uh, the king's side anyways if you enjoyed this video you want to see some more chess commentary go ahead and check out my other videos thank you guys for watching like comment subscribe